Alohomai. Today we're going to talk about Nam Uikolo, or our three W's. These are three ways our native species got to Hawaii. But first, let's look at that term, native. You may have heard this term before, but for today's purposes, we're going to use this definition. So native is an organism that got to a place without the help of humans. This means that these plants and animals arrived to Hawaii all on their own. They were Hawaii's first kama'aina. Now let's take a look at just exactly what these species had to do to get to Hawaii. You may have heard that Hawaii is the most isolated island chain on Earth. Here you can see Hawaii in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, marked by this star. Now each of these lines represents a thousand miles. Hawaii's closest large land neighbor is North America, which is 2,500 miles away. Asia is about 4,000 miles away, and South America is a whopping 6,000 miles away. Imagine, all of our native species had to cross all this ocean all by themselves. Now you may be wondering, weren't there already plants and animals in Hawaii? But Hawaii was built from layers and layers of lava building up from the seafloor. When our islands emerged from the ocean, they looked like this. A brand new lava flow. It's a clean slate for Hawaii's first kama'aina. But again, how did they get across that ocean? They got here using these three dispersal methods we like to call the three W. And they are wings, waves, and wind. You can also remember these dispersal methods in Alelo Hawaii. If you want to hold up your three fingers like a W, now flip them over. What letter do you get? You get our mu, or our mu i kolu. We have our manu, our moana, and our makani. Here they are side by side in case you want to recap. Now you heard me use that term dispersal methods when I introduced the three W's. But what does that word dispersal mean? Dispersal means to distribute or spread out over a wide area. If you can imagine blowing on a dandelion and watching all those little tufts take to the wind, that's a form of dispersal. So how did different creatures disperse from their home continents to Hawaii using the three W's or Namu Ikolu? Our winged friends probably used their wings and flew. And our sea creatures probably used the waves to bring them to Hawaii. But what about our trees and shrubs? How did they get here? Did they decide to jump in the ocean one day and swim to Hawaii and then replant themselves on our shores? Nope. They got here in the mighty form of a seed. Now, if you aren't familiar with just what a seed is or what it's capable of, here is a definition. A seed is a flowering plant's unit of reproduction capable of developing into another such plant. Basically, a seed is a tiny unit of life that will grow into another plant of the same kind one day. Now that we've looked at the different forms in which our natives arrived to Hawaii in, let's look at each dispersal method more in depth. We'll start with our manu, or our wings. It makes sense that our winged friends, like bats and birds, would use those wings to get to Hawaii. Native birds like the kolea still fly back and forth to Hawaii and Alaska every year. But what about those seeds we were talking about? Could they use wings to get to Hawaii? They sure did. Now here we have a kolea bird spending its summer in Alaska. It's filling its belly with tasty berries. You might know this, but inside berries and other fleshy fruits is a seed, or lots of seeds. So that kolea is eating fruits and its seeds, and they're going into its opu, and they hang out in there as it flies to Hawaii. When it gets to Hawaii, out it comes with a little bit of fertilizer, ready to be planted. Another way that seeds can travel using wings is on the outside of birds. Small and light seeds can get stuck to mud on its feet or its legs. Barbed or sticky seeds or seed pods can get stuck to birds' feathers and stick with him until he arrives in Hawaii. Have you ever walked through weeds or certain grasses and gotten your pants and socks covered in pokey or sticky seeds? This is the same concept. So let's recap. So species could get to Hawaii via manu or wings. If the creature had wings itself, like our birds or bats, if it had a yummy or fleshy fruit, basically if it looks tasty to you, it's probably tasty to a bird. Or if it has stickier barb seeds or seed pods. Again, if it would stick to you, it'd probably stick to a bird too. All right, up next we have our moana. Now, like we mentioned before, our sea creatures, like our seals, whales, and fish, could swim to Hawaii. What about those seeds? 
Well, first off, in order to use the waves, seeds would have to float. Next, a seed would have to be salt water tolerant. That's because inside the seed, there's a tiny thing called an embryo. This embryo is where the life happens. Without it, a seed wouldn't be able to sprout and grow into a new plant. So a salt water tolerant seed would have to have a hard or thick seed coat to help protect the embryo from the salt water. Again, let's recap the characteristics that help species use moana or waves to reach Hawaii. One, if a creature could swim, it probably used waves to get here. Two, if it had a seed, it had to be able to float. And the seed also had to be able to be salt water to tolerant. One last thing that can help you identify if a native got here via waves is usually we find these plants and animals near the ocean. Last but not least, we have our makani or our wind. Wind in the form of jet streams are able to transport small light things like seeds to Hawaii. So species that arrived to Hawaii via the makani had to have a seed that was very small, or very light, or was aerodynamic. Now this little sketch of an a'ali'i seed pod is showing that it has a little air bladder in the center, so it's kind of like a little balloon, and there's little wing attachments that help it stay afloat in the air longer. So let's recap the characteristics that help species get to Hawaii via the makani. They were tiny, light, and aerodynamic. And so the last thing I want to leave you folks with is that even if these species arrived to Hawaii, they might not have survived. It's estimated of every 105,000 organisms that arrived to Hawaii, only one survived. Imagine, that's like trying to plant over 100,000 seeds and only having one plant grow. Crazy. So yay for our natives for crossing thousands of miles of ocean for surviving against the odds. Here are just a few of the amazing plants and animals native to Hawaii. Each make Hawaii so special. They make Hawaii Hawaii, which is why it's our job to learn more about them and ensure they survive for generations to come. I hope this video sparks some curiosity into our native species and how they got here and also why they are so remarkable. Ahui ho!